close to 6 o'clock on my phone. Call the meeting to order. Please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Chair Calvegas? Here. Mr. Papadis? Here. Mrs. Passio? Here. Mrs. Moore? Here. Mr. Farrell? Here. Mrs. Kelly? Here. Mr. Ruth? Here. Mr. Wood? Here. Mr. Basor? Here. And Mr. Wright? Here. A public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the clerk in the following manner. One, posted on the bulletin board in the borough clerk's office on January 6, 2014. And two, emailed to the retrospect and courier post on January 6, 2014. Uh, we're going to move right to, we're going to go in reverse order of our agenda. Um, we're going to go into a closed session to discuss personnel issues, uh, firefighters contract, and CWA amendment. Uh, can I get a motion to go into closed session? I still move. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Right, we're in closed. So we'll be back. Then. We said 30 minutes. But okay. We'll okay, we're back in a regular session. We're going to start back with the, uh, the agenda items. The discussion of letter of resignation, the fire stunt code official, and uh, Mr. Knight taking over the position. Is there any question that Mr. Jones is retiring? Mr. Wright, excuse me, Mr. Knight is. Thank you very much. I'm uh, going to take the position. The position is actually a thousand dollars less than your claim. The previous that you're paying is too Any questions on that? No? At least a 2 0 machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Should we put him on for a point? Yes, we're going to put him on for a point. Somebody ought to be. Yeah. The fire sub code official will be changing. Uh, the lease of two Xerox, machi Xerox machines, I don't know if you've already discussed this with us. Do you, do you just need an action tonight? You want an action tonight or for a minute? The, the machine in the front is not working. So we need to act on it? We have enough to describe that. I'm sorry, I'm having it here. Okay. Uh, just to make it clear, we, we are, uh, instead of uh, purchasing that Xerox machines were leased. And I think it was a you know, paper use. I don't think we have two uh, Xerox machines that we would like to lease. And they are uh, color. And the cost would be $175.66. We don't pay for any Five labor. years. Uh, after that, the machine. Okay, so we pay for no ink, no labor. And the, the reason that it was an easy to make decision is the revised uh, proposal that we received is actually cheaper than what the black and white was right. the last meeting. And, and we can lock it down so that, that everyone can use the color copies. I'm not saying they would. So we can keep it to those thousand per month so that they're free. Um, it also provides ability to print graphs and stuff like that and to scan and color also. Okay. Um, the, the way we did it last time, the one, the good one that we have up there, we actually purchased, and I did the math on it, and it comes out, it's, it's ballpark, it's the same. But you have a machine that works versus one that by the time you're done the first year, you have to get a maintenance agreement on it, and then you have to maintain it, so. Well, he wants an action item tonight. If we so purchase an act on tonight, I just forget about the end of March. Okay. okay. Well, that'd be good. Does someone want to make a motion to? I'll make a motion. Uh, at least these two. To lease the two Xerox machines. At the. At uh, three hundred and. At whatever the. Whatever five sixty six each. What was that? One seventy five sixty six each. Six okay. Okay. For sixty months. For sixty months. Is there a second? I'll second that. Uh, roll call. Who made the motion? Uh, Mrs. Kelly and Ms. Patel. State contract number. State contract. State contract number A five one one four five. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Keller. 
Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mrs. Casio? Yes. Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mr. Roop? Yes. And Mr. Papalos? Yes. Okay. The motion is passed. Uh, discussion of refunding two quarters, totally disabled veteran. We understand this is something we're obligated to do, so we'll put that on the agenda. Discussion of. Uh, uh, this was a mistake in that the county and the records, uh, the uh, disabled deduction needs to be um, put back on. He's not entitled to. Oh, the so this is somebody's change. It changed hands. So we're eliminating. The deduction needs to be uh, removed. Uh, appointing discussion of appointing matron crossing guard. Is uh, Ms. Kelly and everybody's okay with that? Uh, I mean, I I I spoke with that guy. I think it was <coughs> the captain uh, seems to feel that that's a good appointment. I haven't seen the application yet. Mr. Wright is supposed to. Well, we had two weeks, so hopefully we can get that done. Uh, discussion of fire truck purchase. Uh, just today we we've been waiting. We approved the. Um, we approved the bond. So what we have is we have a recommendation letter from the fire committee to award a state contract bid. Uh, if you didn't read this, director, we met with the vendor this morning to finalize our selection of the fire apparatus. We wanted to look at the, the equipment. They are also a New Jersey State Fire Apparatus contract. We would review the. Uh, so they're they're ready to go. This is their this, recommendation. Yep, this is their recommendation. Does anybody have any questions? I mean, this we, this is the vendor. Yeah, you know, we basically this is a state contract. We've known about this for quite some time. With this, I think the the committee had some concerns. I think they addressed them. They feel confident, as they said to me a little while ago. We're not going to spend six hundred thousand dollars and not know that we're getting what we want. Um, yeah, it fits in the, uh, everything fits. Fits. Everything's uh, acceptable. Are there any questions? And now this is a is this an action item for this evening? This will be an action item for November. This will be an action item for May. So if there's any questions in the next two weeks, I'm sure the committee can answer it and things like that. So we'll put this on the agenda for May. Absolutely. Okay. Now everyone understands once this is ve this vehicle is purchased, it may take nine to ten months before it's delivered. Yes, because everything is custom. Okay. Yeah. Uh, discussion of road um, opening moratorium. This was brought to our attention by the engineer. I, I'll let turn it over to him. Okay. Um, right now, you have no road ordinances in place. If anybody wants to open a road that was just recently constructed, a lot of employees are coming in trying to upgrade on roads and just uh, reconstruct. The only time we have a moratorium. come to our attention because we've, we've had a few applications and we're uh, nervous about tearing up roads that we just did. So uh, they have pretty much a, a cookie cutter uh, uh, ordinance from other municipalities and if we could put this on for first reading for next month. I think it's a standard. I will get you what we just did in the second reading. I'll forward that to see if he wants to try and adopt the line um, I'll let you continue. Discussion of front and side door repairs. I think the engineer had some, some quotes. Yeah, we got quotes um, in my packet that I handed out today. Enclosures A and B cover the front door in this building and the side egress door. The low quote is from GM Walker for both projects. Uh, the front door was 4958 and that's on page A1 of my attachments. And the side egress door E1, and that was the $14,100. Um, none of those are averted. We've been working on this for six months now, so yes, you can wait until May if you want to award those two projects at that point. Yeah, I think we can make sure the funds are available and we can put this all together. Yeah. yeah. There is one, another quote we got to use the word back in the order of Green Branch Park, and that's a little more urgent because we're 
try to get closers installed in the doors. The doors were designed to be locked in the open position. We did the chain level and changed out all the alarms. We wanted to be able to be locked and unlocked at certain times of the day. But right now, if you push the door open, it's not stay open. There's no closure, no closing mechanism to shut the door. So as a result, we're getting alarms going off. Start there at 15 on the dock to make sure the doors are closed. And what are we going to do to make them close? There are going to be closures like they have here. Can we uh, not so just do it in a hinge form? There's like self closing hinges. Why can't we just do it in a hinge form? They're not as reliable. And these are better. And these won't impair impede lock, uh, keeping it in the lock the, position? Yeah, the. Uh, are they going to be on the outside of the door? D, it's going to be on the inside, but what happens is enclosure D. So the first quote we got was for a regular closer that would not allow the door to be open into that cavity. Okay. We've met with the engineering committee and they still want the ability to lock it in the open position. So we've got the quote from the apparent low quoter and the revised quote now is for 1,460 for two of the closers and then for three door chains that stop the door from swinging the open. The 715 is just a regular that closer? Was a regular closer that you could not open. Fits into an area. No, no, I mean that. I mean, a physical key. A deadbolt. Someone person has someone to lock physically has a person has to physically lock. Okay. That is a key. That is a key. That is a key. No, no, I'm not questioning how it's inside. It's just so it's not an automatic arm opening and locking it back. Because that's what I kind of envisioned. No, you have to physically go out there, open the door, swing it to the, the, the open position, and lock it in. But what Mark's saying is those openers would prevent it from doing that. So we have this option. What we're spending out is a war But it's a more expensive one, too, right? So is that the, well, is everybody, a little quick discussion on that? Does everybody yeah. think that it's important that these doors are, have the ability to lock open? <laughs> well, there's a bank let's say future plan, there's a bank Leave yeah, the doors open. You I think the committee recommended that. What was that? The idea is that this this special lot, this special mechanism gives more opportunity to use the doors in different ways. If there was a reason, if there was a function or the police felt that the door should be left open, these doors will be able to be left open. And they'll be able to lock and go in lock the position. If we buy the lesser sort of Yeah, like a Earth Day you know, yeah. or whatever. Something that you or just something. leave the doors open at the end of yeah. the day, you know, you leave the doors open. Because the regular hinges would impede the doors from opening all the way. The wall behind the door. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he wants action tonight because uh, obviously we've had some problems with the alarms going off because the doors aren't closed. You know. You got one call. She got one call. How many did you get this weekend? Four. Four. Oh, okay. Wow. There's four days in the weekend. Uh, so. Any of them at two in the morning? The motion would be to uh, award the sealed hinges. The pocket closer. To ABS Associated Building Specialties and one thousand four hundred and sixty dollars. Anybody want to make a motion on that? I make a motion. Second. Okay. Roll call. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Mr. Casio. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. And Mr. Grappales. Yes. Who made? Who, can you tell me who made the motion? Mr. Root and then Mr. Fowler. <coughs> okay. The motion is passed. Okay, so hopefully no more. Did anybody mention to you that there's no way that the men who are cleaning the bathrooms can empty their locks and buckets somewhere? Did anybody mention that to you? There's, there's floor drains, or they could dump there's it outside. Fill a there's a loose bit, yeah, right? Yeah, but I'm saying like hot water to wipe down bathrooms. You it's like disinfect to have cold water. That's pretty much. I mean, I thought you did have hot water. Yeah, there's no, so there, no, no, I'm saying there is, but if there's no slop sink for them to fill up a bucket. That's what I'm saying. Right, with hot water. Yeah, they're just picking it outside, or they can fill it with cold water, but there's no slop sink with hot water to fill something up. Or do you think that that's 
something we should consider and maybe put it in the storage area? Well, there is hot water in the facility. Right. That is just a mechanism of getting the hot water. I think if we get the place locked up and we start to clean it, we start to figure it out, I think uh, we can look at it. Right now. We need to kind of close this project out, I think yeah. is what the engineer would yeah. like to do. And, uh, why don't we close it out and then any change orders will be just done as building maintenance. If we want to put off the hot water line a separate spigot for the hot water line. What, what we got to get the engineer out of this project. My concern is that as an ongoing problem, that this is going to be a problem. We're going to have to address it sometime in the near future because the summer activities are going to be quite heavy this summer. There's going to be mud. There's going to be all kinds of stuff dragged into those bathrooms. And I don't know how our men are going to be able to clean it three times a week if they don't have a slop sink and work their mops. I, I well, what they could do, I can make a suggestion, is there's hot water in the sinks in the bathroom. They can fill the sinks up. And, I mean, you know, here, here's our dilemma. If we don't close, we have to close this project. We have to move on. We have made change orders for two years on this project. Because and every time we find a new, good, yeah. and every time we find a new problem, we make another change order. I think we, you know, we, we've learned that the locking mechanism was, was good and bad. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we didn't, we, we missed something. You know, I agree. Go, and this will go on and, and it gets, change your bathroom. Yeah, and, and it's dirty right now. I agree. Uh, hot water would work better than, than, than cold water. Uh, but there is hot water available. Oh, yeah. I, it is a little bit inconvenient right now. But if we get, why don't we get used to what we're doing a little bit first? Ah. Eleanor, <laughs> we can belabor everything I we know. have constantly. I, I just see something. Yeah. So why yeah. why yeah. we didn't think of that? Why we didn't think of it? Because it's probably the first bathroom built in Borough Run in the history of the Borough Run. How's that for an answer? Yes. I'm going to suggest that buy a piece of hose, put a thing on the end, yes. hook it up to the sink in the bathroom, well, sure and put doing. the hose and hose the in the bathroom. And there's a drain in the floor. There's a drain right in the floor that you can wash everything in. You can hook it up. There's a drain on the hot water. There is. You know what I get? I mean, I like yeah. It's a lot easier than. Yeah. And not going to say later on we couldn't put a line coming off the hot water right. for a spigot. We can. Mm -hmm. But if we keep, we don't have to do this at a council meeting. This could be done under a budgeted item as a repair, just like we repair lights in the back. We can do that. I don't think we have to have council action. I'm just, you know, every time we bring the engineer in, it's, it's, it's a, you want to close it out, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So why don't we at least agree that it's a budget item to put a hot water spigot? I think the public works department can handle that. Uh, discussion of accident investigation committee ordinance. Um, we've had a resolution since 2004 appointing members of the, uh, the employee body and of the governing body to get together. I think this must have been facilitated by the chip at some point when there's an accident. Okay, so in 2004 there was a resolution passed. It was updated again in 2010. And the problem with the resolution is it disappears. So the idea is to have a ordinance that would establish the positions, which is no different than what was established by the resolution, position where the chief of police, the deputy fire chief, the superintendent of roads, the administrator, the clerk, and the, and the, uh, the director of personnel was the, 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 the last person, or it could be the mayor, either of those, those positions, or anybody else. It could we can make it whatever we want. But the idea that this would be an investigating committee, that any time there was an accident, if it was, you know, uh, to get something done, they can investigate it, make their recommendations, and move forward. We were able to do this last week. Uh, it worked out pretty well. The idea was to, a few things were, were sold that were uh, observed that we need to uh, fix. And uh, so the claim went to Jeff? The claim went to Jeff. Uh, it was called in properly. Uh, Later, the report was all filed. Um, I think the chief rep came out before the insurance rep came out. It was to write that with them. I don't think there's any problem. I think the only conclusion on their side was that it was uh, it was an accident. It was a preventable accident, but it was an accident. And on the investigative committee, uh, Joyce will be typing something up that will go to council, basically stating, you know, what, the what happened. Any kind of, were. Yeah, the resolution. You know, there was some. So now, what kind of ordinance are you thinking? The, the, the resolution already established it. The problem was is that 
Now, every council is kind of forgotten about until something happens, and then all of a sudden you have to realize that, okay, well, who, who's supposed to look into this? And, uh, well, so just for clarity, yeah. I don't think it's a, a council committee like engineering. It's not a council. It's, it's a committee yeah. that's created by council. So just, yeah. Just make, just and that's what I'm saying. That's why it's the chief of police. It's the right. superintendent of roads. Right. It's, the, it's the, you know, uh, the fire chief. Right? You know, the, it's a position. So we'll draft something up uh, based on the resolution that Joyce has, and, and we, can, we can look at it. It can either... If we get it in time, we can look at it for May. If not, it can go once a month. Discussion of charging uh, vendors an administrative fee for police side jobs. And it was, there's, there's, there's an existing, there's not an existing ordinance for this, is there? I'm still researching. We don't believe there's an existing ordinance. I thought it was $55. We're researching. Okay, fine. 55 We understand what we're charging, but we haven't been able to find how we can amend it. Because one, one of the issues with the ordinance right now is it, it it's not the ordinance. What we're charging the vendors is we're charging the vendors a rate for the officer, a rate for the vehicle, and then the officer is paying an administrative fee. Uh, the idea is to move that administrative fee onto the vendor because we're the ones doing all the paperwork, doing all the payroll deductions, doing all the payroll work, sending out the bill, paying everything, receiving the money, and, and we're actually charging the officer for this fee. So the idea was to add more like I think the idea was about a ten dollar fee per hour for administrative. So once we have that, uh, we can change that. That's, not, that's consistent with uh, other. Business. It's consistent, yeah. Because uh, there is a cost for us to do all that. Work. So will that be on things? If he can, well, he he's, will not, will not he's researching it. So. Okay, okay. So maybe June. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, discussion of health insurance ordinance amendment. I'll do this quickly. Um, you know, the, the current ordinance, Joyce, do you have the current ordinance? I didn't bring it. Oh, you bring it every <laughs> meeting. I have it in the other phone. I'm going to read what, what's typically in all our contracts. Every parent employee that's full-time that, that gets health benefit is, is uh, covered under a contract except for management. And management would be the, uh, the clerk, the oh! administrator, oh, bless you. Bless you. Thank you. the chief of police, any, any uh, superior officers in the police department, uh, the management of the, of, of the public works department, and the management of the sewer department. <clears throat> the current parent ordinance, which goes back to the to the 70s and, and, and 80s. Uh, basically, there's, there's, a, there's a line in there, and I'll, I'll read, I'll read what, the, what, what it should say, and then I'll, I'll go backwards. Uh, upon retirement, the employee shall assume the cost of health, the employer shall assume the cost of health care, including prescription and dental benefits for the employee and dependents when said employee retires for 25 years or more of service to the employer. Provided, however, the retired employee must contribute to the cost of the health care plans to the same, same extent as the active employees are contributing. Um, starting at age 65, the employee shall be responsible to, to obtain Medicare Part B at their own expense. At this time, the employee's health care plan shall be deemed secondary coverage. The current ordinance does not clarify that those, those two items. The current ordinance basically says, same line, the borough shall assume full cost of health benefits coverage for employee employees and their dependents, but not including survivors, which is the amendment, when such employees retire after 25 years or more of service with the borough. Except, excepting those who elect the third retirement, and up to, and up until, this is where it gets confusing, and up until 65 years of age. So that line has, has been questioned. Up it could be very easily interpreted that until you're done at 65. It could be interpreted that you're done at 65. So the argument is, someone's in a contract for 25 years, they ascend to the management position, public works, in the police department, in any department, then they lose the health benefit by getting the promotion. Um, obviously there's a cost for us to do this, but we're talking about most of these people have worked in the borough for 30 years, 35 years, and at least 25 years. So 
uh, when I first got on council, we had a cap and retire. And this was brought to our attention. And uh, what we did at the time, instead of fixing the ordinance, we simply had a separation agreement that said that this superseded this ordinance. Or fixing the ordinance was bad. We just had a simple agreement that said survivors isn't an issue. You would continue to have this, this benefit. You would continue to pay. If you survive, if you pay for the after the, the, the employee dies. This is the tricky part, and this is for discussion. It, it, and this is a past practice of this with policy. It's, it's consistent. And that's another thing. You know, the idea is if an employee were to continue to live, this family would be covered. If the employee dies, this family gets. Just, you just raise a whole lot of issues. That's well, that's he's fine. penalized for dying. That's okay, but you need to make sure that it's clear that that. If, that survivor benefits will exist as long as that person remains single, for example. Yes, and, and you're right. We haven't we haven't addressed that, and even the contracts aren't clarified on that. The, the, the contracts are a little vague. I think all the contracts are vague on survivors. I can I can tell you this: the true scenario ones that process the, the bills and things of that nature, and have the information on the retirees. I have no record of any of our employee ever being told that they're not covered for. No, there, there's a couple side there's a couple, I know, no, but I'm just saying going back to it. There's a couple side agreements from the past. Right. But other than that, so, so when you get this right, this would be that we covered it after 65. And when, when this was put together, the only union that had a contract was right. a police union. So public but works, you know, fire. Right. The language that you read is a good language. Yeah, so what I'm hoping in the next two weeks is, is provide a draft, maybe with your input, because it would start to cover the management employees. And yes. you're right. It would help, help us with language in the contracts if we start to be more specific. Because one of the things it does say You want is, to stop the wives if the husband dies? I did yes. not. Exactly the opposite. Yeah, but, but we want to stop the wife. But we do want to, you do want to stop the wives if she gets remarried. Of course. Well, yeah, but it doesn't say that. And that's what the lawyer has to say. You say that, so why could you hear The solicitor said that. I'm sorry. But I'm, I'm a little hoarse, so I'm not speaking as yeah, I was. But saying. see, that's why I said we're down this end of the table. Yeah. Yeah. So you're usually next to me. I got well, I'm so you down there. Down there. <laughs> uh, just to, not to relate once again too much, but one of the things like in, in the fire contract that we're, we're uh, approving, um, there's an article, and this follows through with many of the other contracts. Any provision not specif specifically outlined in this contract shall be controlled by the borough of rugby policy and procedures. Okay. So that gives us a little caveat to kind of hopefully define some of these variable things. Unless uh, we do have some past precedent, right. I think but that you sent me that. Look at it. Yeah. I think that, uh, but this will help us for reti future retirees. Yeah. Well, he read that off. That's off the contract. That's the fire contract. This is the uh, borough ordinance. Ordinance. Yeah, no, I can do it. I meant what you read before you read the that's, 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 that's consistent with how we're treating people covered under a contract. Yeah, it's only those managers. Right. So we just need, we just want to clear and want to So we've got a few there. Yeah. 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 The employees still get uh, after twenty at the twenty five year service, they keep their medical, not just management, not just the police. Right. Yes, the idea would be to treat everybody the same. Everybody equal. Yes. All right. Okay. I remember that for everybody equal. Yes. Is there any other discussions tonight? Anybody have anything else? Any committees? Ms. Kelly? Mr. Root? Hey. Mr. Brown? Hey. Hey. I see him. Do we have to do uh, that resolution about the fire? Yeah, we have to do the resolution. We have to do the fire contract resolution. Oh, yes. Okay, we have to do that? Okay. So, uh, we had 1471, resolution 1471, resolution approving the contract with the Kansas County Uniform Firefighters Association, IAFF, local 3 Do I have a motion? I so move. Seconded. Uh, roll call. Mrs. Cowan? Yes. Mr. Power? Yes. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Moore? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. And Mr. Capaz? Yes. This motion is adopted. Uh, we did the closed session. Okay, we're going to go to uh, criminal welfare. This portion of the meeting is open to the public. Anyone wishing to speak, please come to the microphone, state your name and address. Yes, if only you need to use it. Thank you. Hold on a sec. Al Palmasano, we 31 North Oakland Avenue. I've been walking through uh, Collingswood for the past month. 
big banner, spring registration for rec program. Okay, we are getting on board for the recs. We will uh, start doing that. You're just talking about when is summer right? Yeah. Well, to let the parents know. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. almost May. Yeah. I think Mr. Rudy, you're right. Well, May. everything has been pushed off because everything I wanted to do in January and February is now being done in now. March, April, and May. So as soon as I get some, the ROI is summing up with that, I'm going to work on summer rec. Right. And I will do the best I can to let everybody know. Yeah, we'll get them out. We'll definitely get the letters out for the school. While the school is open. Yes, yes while the school is open. And we'll be appointing the summer rec counselors. Because yes. I think we now are required to have an appointment. Well, we always appointed the summer rec. Yeah, we do. That's yeah. But there's a new rule. There's, there's uh, new rules. There's a new rule. We've got to go to the lab. Yeah, we've got to do training. Okay. Yeah, there's training. Anything else? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing no one else, is there a motion to close the public portion? Thanks. See you. Right. Make a motion. Do I have a second? Do I have a second to close the public Aye, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Public portion is closed. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I have a second. All in favor? Aye.